This topic is a little bit of a carryover from my days using Unity. Something that I've always missed is the ability to automatically just call a function to completely disable an object inside of runtime. So we'll be looking at how we can replicate a very kind of similar functionality inside of Unreal for the default actor class. By the end of the video, we'll have something that looks a little bit like this. We just have an option to disable the entire actor, either automatically because this is being done on the begin play, just for kind of simplicity in demonstration. If this isn't disabled, then we'll have this functionality going on where we can see that everything is still visible. The tick function, if it hasn't been manually set to be disabled, will be running in the background and the collisions and everything like that will be interacting with the player. Conversely, if I come back in and tick the auto disable, this is going to call a function on begin play to set everything inactive. So that would be the tick function, the collision and rendering. So we can see here that everything is now invisible and it's not as though there's like a leftover trace and we can run into it. We can completely bypass the collisions and everything like that. So this kind of thing can be super useful if you need to do things like object pooling inside of a project where you may not necessarily want to keep destroying and spawning actors. You can just hide them, stop them from ticking, stop them from rendering and any collision checks. So this keeps the cost, the performance down very, very low. And then you can activate them if and when another actor of that type is needed again sometime in the project. So this would be good for things like bullet shooters, top down shooters, where there's a lot of things going on in the level, but things like bullets and projectiles pickups and things like that don't need to be constantly spawned into the world. So to see how this is done, I'm going to start by going into the header class. So I'm going to jump over to Rider for Unreal right now. Very simple actor class in C++ named a disable actor example and of type actor. We've got the constructor and the begin play override. So they're here by default and they will be used. I've also got the tick function implemented just to show how we can disable the tick functionality as well. And one small caveat that we might need to consider so that we don't turn the tick function on when it was already default set to not tick. So for that reason, I've created this Boolean. So B override tick. I've set this by default to false. I've put this in the editor just so that we can check that it's working. Usually you'd probably want to make this completely private and have this only working inside of the, uh, the function call. And then the same for the B auto disable is just a Boolean so that we can toggle on and off to show that the disable function is being called. And then finally, I've got the void set active function, which is the function that we'll be creating. It takes in a single Boolean and that is, uh, I've just called that one active. And this is what's going to toggle the actor. So over in the code file, nice and simple in the constructor. The reason I've kept this is this is the thing that can cause a small issue if you just default toggle the set active regardless. So I'm going to set this to can have a tick to be false and we'll see why in a moment, because then as we go down into the begin play, we're going to call the standard super begin play. And what we want to check here is if the B override tick should be changed. And this is going to be based on whether or not the primary actor. So what we're setting up here, the primary actor can have a tick. If that is set to false, we want to set this to true so that we're going to override that we won't change this later. If it's set to true, then we can leave it and we can control this however is needed. And then the final thing again, just for debugging purpose, uh, because I didn't want to set up a bunch of actors just to interact with this and set this uh, to be active or not active, depending on what we've set the Boolean for testing, we're then going to call the set active function and set this to false if we've set this in the editor. And finally, again, just to show the issue that this can cause up here, we're using the tick function. If this is ticking, then I'm just using this uh, preprocessor directive up here for a custom message and printing tick. So the main function and the bulk of what we're going to be looking at is our set active function. So if we start from the bottom to top, because these are nice and simple, but again, they have their own little caveats that we need to consider. So the first thing set actor enable collision is very, very simple. We're going to assume that by default, it will be active. Um, and, and that means we don't need to do any extra considerations on this one. Uh, if it's already active, then we're going to set it to inactive. And if it's not active, then we'll set it to active. So that's the Boolean being passed in up here. Now the set actor hidden in game is slightly different because by default, it's always set to false. It's kind of an inverse check to what we would ideally be looking for because this is something that we can use that all actors have, and this is how we can get rid of all of the components at the same time. So we know that we won't be, we don't need to manually go through each different static mesh that we have on our actor. Uh, this kind of does that for us. So by leveraging this, this will save us a lot of time. And again, we can go and see exactly what this is doing. So if we go to the declaration, 
Uh, this is going to be setting the new hidden and we can also see the same thing for the enable collision so this is essentially all we're doing is we're calling this it's going through a for loop for all the components and it's checking the change in the collision so we can leverage this but it does mean we need to make those kind of considerations on how the base functionality is working now because this is set to a false so to not be hidden so to be visible it's kind of an inverse check so we need to invert our active boolean being passed in then the most nuanced thing that we have here is the whether we're overriding the tick or not so we're going to focus on this bit as well so the reason for this is say that we come in and we've manually set up here that we never want this actor to tick so we're going to set this to can have a tick to be false if we didn't do this override check that means if we come back in here and we set this to active and everything's passed to false and then we do it again this would mean that a class that initially had the actor set to false it would actually re-enable the actor's tick even if we were never going to use it and if we've purposely turned it off for performance considerations so what we're doing that's why we're doing this check up here so if this has been set to false if we know that we have manually come in and we have told the class that it never needs to tick regardless of whatever else is changing then we can come in we're going to set this to override which means if this is set to override we're just going to automatically set this to be back false to make sure that this never changes from false we could have just returned out from this bit or not done anything it's completely up to you but i'm just making this very very clear what's happening we're going to set this to false even if it's already false if we're not overriding this which means we're going to assume that this by default is true so we're not going to override this will be set to false to override then that means that we will want to make sure that when we are setting this active or inactive that the tick is also being addressed in that function call so that's all this is doing hopefully that isn't too confusing and and makes sense but like i said the cost of not doing this is that if you had a class that you were never expecting to tick this will still be updated even if you've set it up here to can have a tick to equal false this will override this when you come back in and reactivate the function and just go through all of this by default so we can see that that was actually working because if I go back to the editor, if I set this to auto disable, you'll notice we don't get the ticking function. So there's no message being printed here. Likewise, if I untick this, so we're not disabling this, then again, we're not getting any message over here. Now I'm just going to go back and change some things and recompile. So the first change, all I've done is changed this to be true, I've compiled. So this is ready to go. I won't make you watch the compilation. If we come back over and press play, uh, we can see that we're now ticking because we haven't disabled this. If we do disable this, then the tick will stop going and running that print string, which is again, exactly what we want. So this was just a, hopefully a fairly simple example of how we can add our own set active or disable functionality inside of Unreal, similar to that of what you'd find in Unity. You can add this to maybe a base class of any actor that you know throughout the uh, the game may not be necessarily always needing to be destroyed and recreated maybe doing some kind of object pooling and you can set certain things up just to be completely disabled no tick no rendering so really lower the cost but don't need to then incur the costs of creating and destroying things then you may want to look at this type of approach and hopefully this will be quite useful because again we can just come in and we can see that this is active here and then can be toggled here uh, setting it like I have as a public function means that your pool managers or game manager or however you're going to set this up can have access to all of those actors which are able to be disabled and just call those functions and toggle them as and when they're needed. Again, you'll see things like this used for projectiles, top-down shooters and things that will have this kind of implementation so that you can just recycle things rather than creating and destroying things constantly when you have loads of different objects being presented on screen and then maybe can just be hidden somewhere off screen to cut down certain costs at runtime so i'll leave that video here of course if you have enjoyed the video or found this useful please do leave a like and share the video around it's greatly appreciated and helps the channel reach as many people as possible remember that you can support the channel on patreon and by doing so you could get yourself access to the project files so you can go through all of the examples that i have in this project at the moment uh, we're nearing i think around about 30 topics for the uh, component specific topics i've gone through the actors interfaces some of the miscellaneous stuff and the different types of character controls and you get access to all of the animation and the ca character setup and everything that i've got here as well so do consider that if you enjoy the content on the channel and you can get yourself a little uh, kind of goodie as a reward for that is greatly appreciated and really helps me to keep making this weekly content
Otherwise, you can show your support for free by just subscribing and hitting the notification bell on the channel. And again, you'll receive the weekly updates as soon as any of the topics go live from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever, though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.